Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. We're in the FA-18C and we're looking at our brand new missile that's just been released mid-October 2019. It is the AGM-62 Walleye. This is something that I find really exciting. It's one of my favourite weapons. I know a lot of people like the modern GBU-38 INS GPS guided bombs, but I love this era. Back in the 60s, when the very first guided bombs were coming out, we've got the bull pops and we've got these uh, walleyes. So the walleye that we get in DCS for the Hornet is the AGM-62 Mark V Fat Albert, known as the Walleye 2. So the Walleye 1 originally was created in the early 60s. This Walleye 2 was out in the early 70s, dropped in anger in Vietnam. It's guided by an omnidirectional slewable TV sensor and packed a massive 2,000 pound warhead. So it's a really destructive bomb. For the time, very advanced, obviously. We get them on pylons two and eight. They're gonna be under the bomb section. In real life, they're actually known as air-to-ground missiles, but they were, of course, actually bombs. They were not powered in any way. They were just guided. So we can have just these two equipable. They're massive, so we simply just can't have any more on the aircraft. And we can use them with or without a data link pod. Without a data link pod, they are a fire and forget weapon, similar to an unpowered TV guided AGM-65 Maverick. With the data link pod equipped, we can view real-time feed from the missile seeker head and make trajectory corrections while they're falling. So we're gonna equip with a data link pod and use it with and without once we get up into the air. So we can have the data link pods here, AWW-13, and we can have them on pylons three and seven as well. So I'm just gonna put them in the middle pod here, middle pylon, sorry, re-equip. Wow, that's a big weapon. We're now going to take off and search for targets. As ever, things we need to do, ensure our master arm is on and our air ground master mode is on there. You can see that we have the option for our walleye there and there is our data link pod there. Before we go any further, we're going to look at our controls. To drop the bomb, of course, we press weapon release button there. To slew the seeker head of the weapon about, we're going to press and hold TDC depress down while then pressing TDC up, down, left and right. It's important you don't forget to press the depress button while doing this, otherwise it doesn't work. We will have to uncage the seeker head from its bore sighted position. We do with one press of cage or uncage button. We will need to select our relevant DDI, either the left or the right, SCS left or SCS right, as we see needed. We're first going to drop the bomb without the use of the data link pod, and then we'll go around to do another drop with the data link pod. So we're gonna select our weapon. You can see it's crossed out, got it selected. We're gonna press it again now to bring up weapon screen. What we're actually seeing here in our DDI is what the sensor sees of our selected station. Our selected station is currently station 8 and we can change that with step there. So station 2 is now selected. Fuses, we can have an instantaneous fuse or a delayed fuse. We'll go for instantaneous. So the way we're going to do this is that currently the seeker head of the weapon is shown where this reticle is. Currently it's locked to the bore site so it follows wherever our aircraft goes. So if we want to uncage this seeker head from our bore side position and move it about, we first need to uncage. And also, as well as that, we need to ensure that this DDI here has the TDC selected. It does not at the moment because it does not have the star. We want the star at the top right. So we're gonna press SCS left and you can see that the star is now there, the diamond, sorry, I mean. Sometimes you may have to press it a few times for it to work, it's just how it is in the Hornet. So this is now ready for use. We now need to uncage it. Press the cage, cage uncage button. Station two weapon is now uncaged. We now can press and hold, depress while using the TDC cursor keys to move it le down left and right and whatnot. And you can see we are moving it. This is where the camera seeker is showing. This is the ball side position. This around the outside is the edge, the limits of our seeker. So we can get down to that far and then our seeker can't see any further. If we want to read ball sight, we can crab here, and that will send, that will recage it back to our ball sight, and it's now caged. So we've gone past the target now. We're gonna turn around, we're gonna find a target. Note that the weapon works by getting a visual TV contrast lock, and it can be used against moving targets, as I hope to show in a minute. We do not have any weapon guidance, uh, nothing really telling you when to drop, per se. It will tell you if you have a valid contrast lock with this HUD guy here. If it's crossed out, we do not have a valid contrast lock. If we do have a valid contrast lock on a target, it will not be crossed out. And that means at least the Seeker Head has a valid contrast target lock. It is a long range weapon and we can drop this up to 45 nautical miles in terms of range, assuming we are in current speed and altitude parameters. Speed is generally going to be about 450 knots, but just this video, because I want lots of time to talk to you, I'm gonna go a little slower than that. I'm gonna go for the moving targets, RC. Right, I'm going to uncage. 
I'm going to depress and press a move. Try and find those targets. Try and find those targets. Where are they? Where are they? There they are. They're near the statics. There oh, you go. I got them. Roger. Now, it's... Oh, uh, no, it's not found a valid contrast lock yet. You can see we've still got to cross through it. So it's now a case of manipulating this cursor around to try and get a lock onto the target. So maybe a little bit awkward to get these guys. They are moving. Just takes a little finesse, I think. I had trouble locking the ones against the road because the contrast isn't there. Yeah. Ah, oh, I got one, finally. Also I'm just going to pause there to talk about that. It took me a while to get the contrast lock. I just simply wasn't in parameters. I wasn't close enough. The contrast versus the ground simply wasn't enough. But I did finally get a lock, and it's no longer crossed out, and uh, we're good to go. Other than having this uncrossed, there's nothing telling me that I can fire, so I can literally just press the weapon release button now. It will drop, and I can turn away, and it will guide itself, and I'll have nothing else to do with it. So let's get that a little bit further, because I am quite slow. These guys are moving about 20 knots at the moment, about 25 miles per hour, something like that. I'm going to drop them now. Now I'm going to just put my autopilot barometric hold on, it will do it, and it will, and follow the bomb. Pretty meaty weapon. You can see the sensor on the front there, and as Wag says, there's a windmill, just a generator on the back there. We can see it guiding towards the moving targets. Oh, they've done a little um, chicane, I wonder if it keeps working. Fingers crossed, it might blow them all up, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2,000 pound warhead. Oh my goodness. Oh, i got multiple shacks, three shacks. Is that cool or is that cool, man? Okay, so let's set up for the next weapon. We've currently got Station 2 selected, so we're going to step to Station 8, which is a new and valid weapon. This time we're going to be using the data link pod, but we're not actually going to tune into the or use the data link pod until we've found a target with Station 8 weapon. And generally speaking, our bomb for profile is that we should be flying high and fast, but just to give me as much talking time as possible, I'm going to keep relatively low and slow in this particular video. So we've got to get back on target now. Okay, target smokestacks identifies visually double check everything check we've got our diamond and we have checked register air to ground and master arm on and we are so we're going to uncage as before we're going to tdc depress and remove the cursor to try again to lock onto a target how about that one there can i lock that no how about that when it's locked it will ground stabilize it'll become very apparent when it does achieve a lock we're a little far out at the moment so i'm just going to keep maneuvering the cursor around until we achieve what i feel is going to be a valid lock there, we've got one. What we now need to do is to tune our data link pod, which from standard will not be tuned into Station 8 missile. So I'm going to go data link pod there. I'm going to go to weapon down here. I'm going to select uh, weapon, uh, sorry, uh, walleye data link there. You can see that it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy because we're tuned into the wrong weapon station. We need to tune into the correct wep weapon station. This is a typical thing that we'll need to do. We're going to unpause UFC there channel uh, it's station eight we're going to tune into so station eight we're now channeled we're now tuned into channel station eight because we're looking at the seeker feed through the data link and note that it is more fuzzy so other than that we're all ready to go you can see we've got a valid contrast lock here from the seeker head we're ready and we've got our all our data link selected so i'm just going to get into what i feel our weapon dropping parameters speed up altitude up you can see that it's off to the left slightly because you, you can see the seeker head position there i think just about be okay so i'm now going to drop the weapon weapons away and note that we can carry on watching the feed of the weapon so we can fly around now. I can now depress and cursor key to re-target the missile. I now want it to attack that target there. So I'm going to use my TDC depress and cursor keys. So let's start that target. In fact, let's go for that one. So we're adjusting it on the fly. Which is a pretty damn cool thing to do. And thump. And I missed him, and that was just my bad aiming, basically. If I would have concentrated on that a little more, that would have hit him. So that shows, that's the use of that. We can adjust that into position and even change targets. I hope that helps, and see you later.